Hi everyone and welcome to another refurbishment video. This is an HP Compact Elite 8000 from late 2009 and these were very common in uh, a lot of offices. Um, looking at, straight at the case, um, it's got the usual USB 2 ports on the front and it's got a headphone, uh, headphone socket and a microphone socket. It's got a DVD writer drive. Onto the back, it's got keyboard and mouse, VGA port, um, USB 2 ports, and there's the expansion slots, and that's the um, the power supply exhaust fan. The good thing about this case is there's just no there's no screws to open the, open it up. Just pull that hand and lift it up like that. The first thing I did was clean out the case. There was a lot of dust everywhere, so uh, I did that, and then I took the CPU cooler out, gave that a clean, and reapplied the thermal paste. Then I took the front intake fan out and clean that um, when I actually started this machine up for the first time the power supply was making a loud whining noise so what I did is I took the power supply out which is easy to do just lift that comes out and um, took the fan out and put some sewing machine oil in there as, as lubricant put it back in and everything was fine um, you notice there's a lot of green tabs with arrows on and that makes removal of the components really easy like uh, the DVD drive you just lift that tab up and that comes out and it's also a slot underneath for a hard drive um, front cover is probably the easiest I've ever encountered in a case you just pull those three tabs and the, the cover comes off front cover front cover comes off just like that just pop it back on you can actually secu actually secure it with a screw if needed um, going back to the CPU cooler again that's really simple there's just four screws so there's no um, no fiddly clips like you do get sometimes on Intel and AMD coolers just undo the four, four uh, take this cover off undo four screws and cooler comes out um, so the upgrades I've done to this um, I haven't changed the CPU that's an E8500 dual core I've just kept that in there it wasn't really upgrading it wasn't really worth upgrading so I've kept that in there um, I've added a low profile graphics card it's an AMD R5 or R7240, I can't remember which. It's a one gig graphics card. Again, it wasn't really worth adding anything more powerful to this machine because the CPU will just bottleneck it. So I've tied up the cables with some cable ties. I've added eight gig of RAM. I think that motherboard will take 16 gig, but for this age of machine and what I want to do with it, it's not really worth it. Um, I've added a mechanical hard drive for programs and storage under sits underneath the DVD writer. I've added a 60 gig solid state drive, and that's uh, for Windows. Um, and that's that's the only upgrades I've done. Okay, so let's start this machine up and uh, give it some benchmarks. Okay, so we booted up into Windows. Um, there's no problem with this uh, setup. General Windows usage is fine. Browsing and copying files. Startup's pretty quick as well. Now, as with all my builds, I prefer Firefox as the browser. So, starts up pretty quick. I've got uh, uBlock Origin um, ad blocker. Again, I always add this uh, to Firefox. And if you go on YouTube, you can play 1080p 
HD videos without any problems at all, no slowdown or skipping. Uh, it won't do 1440p and it won't do 4K at Trident. Um, so on this size screen that's not too much of a problem. Now the first game we're going to look at is Crisis, which uh, is still used as a graphical gaming benchmark even today and it was released about 13 years ago. Now I'm not re using any uh, screen recording software I'm recording it direct onto the camera as usual because I want the least amount of processing um, strain put on the CPU and uh, for the frames per second count in the top left I'm using Bandicam rather than something like flat fraps or uh, MSI afterburner because again I don't want the CPU under any unnecessary strain so on medium settings we get in on average I would say 45 to 50 frames per second I've nudged the resolution down slightly and you'll probably also see a bit of pop up but um, on that it's uh, it's uh, not not too bad with those settings so it's even nudging 60 frames per second occasionally but if you've got a lot of action I'd say you're looking at 40 frames per second which uh, is fine So there's a lot of firefighting going on here. It's occasionally nudges down to 35 frames per second, which is which is fine. Another shooting game. Uh, this is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Um, This is another shooting game, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I've got it on um, medium settings and you're getting above 60 frames per second, which is not too bad. And this is a single player campaign, rather than a more familiar multiplayer um, part of uh, the Call of Duty games. So yeah, sometimes it even goes to 100 frames per second, which is not too bad. This is a game called Deus Ex uh, Human Revolution. Um, what I'm trying to do is play games where the minimum specification is dual core CPU. And uh, on low settings in this, we're getting on average about 40. 40 frames per second which is not too bad I suppose it'll dip if you get to, if there's any action in the game but yeah 45 to 45 to 50 it's not too bad right first sports game this is one of the FIFA um, games which is from 2014 and I'm sure this PC could probably play um, games that are further in the series but 2014 is a decent enough test and um, all graphical settings are on high and uh, there's no problem at all with this If you're a James Bond fan, you'll like this game. This is a third-person 
Um, it's more stealth this one. It's James Bond 007 Bloodstone. So we're not getting too many frames per second on this, probably averaging 25 to 30 depending on what's going on. But it is playable. I suppose if we nudge some of the settings down a bit, we'll get uh, a better frame rate. Okay so, okay, so that's uh, Mr. Bond. Having a break from first person shooters, this is a racing game, racing game called Ridge Racer Unbounded. Ridge Racer, I'm sure, being familiar to a lot of people, going back to consoles and the early days of PC gaming. We're probably, in this one, we're probably going to get on average 25... And slightly above and slightly less, 25 frames per second, which is which is playable, I suppose. Um, I've got this on the lowest graphical settings, and uh, even then, I think it still still stands up pretty well. Sometimes we're even getting 30 frames per second, depending on what's going on. You actually get points in this game for stunts and damaging, um, damaging things. Okay, so that's. This is another game in the Wolfenstein series. It's called Wolfenstein: The New Order, and this will play. Uh, this machine will play it on low settings. And to be honest, um, when you're moving around really quick, you can't really tell that much difference. Well, I can't anyway. Between um, low settings and anything above that um, it will probably this machine will probably play the old blood which is the next chapter which came out a year after this I don't think it will play new Colossus in fact I'm pretty sure it won't play the new Colossus um, at the moment we're at uh, it's a fairly intensive firefight and when when there's a lot happening you, it, it'll dip down to about 22 frames per second but on average I'd say you're looking at 30 to 35 still, still playable Just to recap then, I got this desktop computer from uh, eBay for £20 and I added 8 gigs of RAM, solid state drive and hard drive and low profile graphics card and um, runs Windows fine, uh, it's general office work it's fine and as I've got now it's uh, 1080p um, HD video, runs fine, no stuttering, um, if you're into uh, gaming and you can expect uh, any games with a minimum spec of a dual core CPU and uh, one gig graphics card it's going to run fine no problems at all um, that's it thanks for watching